Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to be putting together the Cotton Cuts mystery quilt called Are You Game? And I have the small. This is our clue 10, which is how to put it together. I'm going to do it a little bit different than I've been doing it. We got this in our kit. If anybody remembers that little game. I haven't had one of those in a long time. They have the block of the month. And you know this is the card that you color to enter the giveaway. And then we have an advertisement for Yvette for Piecing It Real. Let me show you her card. This is Foundation Paper Piecing Online Membership. If you'd like to join, I'm going to flip it over so you can see everything here. This way you can pause your video and take down... Now when you get your pieces in your pack, which I got, and these are it right here on the ironing board, I went ahead and made sure that I had all my pieces. I have them laid out here. There's three and then two of these and then this one here is going to be the binding and I'm just going to set it aside. Here's the way that I have my table set up. Now my all my pieces are marked. That's section one and I marked it based on as I went along and it told us how to mark it. So I've got two up there and then I have section three down here and then I have four up there. This way I can pull from whatever I need. There's five a and B, there's section six right there. Here is my seven, and it's two pieces because it's the long piece that goes across there and that. There's eight up here, and then nine here. And I'm just going to grab them as it says and put them together. And any kind of marking that we need to do, I will show you how to do that. So here is my overall table that I have it set up on. And then I'm going to put it together on the other side by the machine. Now, if you have this page, you can see that it doesn't go in order. And I'm going to show you the next page. The very first thing that it says that we're going to do is we're going to take section 8A, which is up here in the corner, and a 8B and a 5A. So it's not going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I only have my stuff in order like that so I can just grab the pieces and then as we make it it will tell you the size that it needs to be if yours is not exact please don't worry about it don't get yourself all tense about it you're just gonna make it based on you sewing this because you have sewed it the same way every time so your pieces will fit whether it comes out this size or not you can always add to it to make it bigger and you can always decrease something to make it smaller if you want so let's go ahead and begin and we're gonna join our 8A to our 8B. We're going to press it towards 8B. Then we're going to join our 5A. And I'm looking at the picture here. So you can see we're joining this piece to this piece. That's what the arrow represents. And this piece to this piece, which represents that arrow. And then we're going to press towards 8B. So let's go ahead and we're going to put the pieces together. And anytime something matches and lines up, I will let you know if we have to do any kind of marking on it. And you're going to be mindful of your nestling. Remember you want your seam to go to the right or the left for nestling so it's not all piled up and when I say that I mean this all the fabric piled up on one side where you got a humongous bump. All right and I'll show you when we get to that point so you'll know. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm showing you the first one that I have laid down here. So I laid my two first pieces down and what I did was I went ahead and made sure that it all matches and then I pinned this to keep it straight and here's where we're going to put our mark the first time so let me show you what we're going to do to avoid cutting through the tip and losing it I take my ruler and I lay it down on my fabric and I make a little mark above the intersection of the fabric, the excuse me, the thread that was sewn, here's the intersection. I come on this side and then I won't take the tip off. So I have a pin here because that's going to go downward and I don't want that to flip up when it sews down here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew this piece first. I'll take my first pin out because I have already put my needle down in my fabric and that's the only reason I had it in there at the end. And then slowly sew it. Try not to go over your pins. I'll go as close as I can and once I have reached that flap on the back side, which I know it's right there, then I'll stop 
And here's where we're going to be real, real careful. We're going to come up and we're going to stay on the line, if not the right-hand side. And the same thing for this. There we go. I've already gone over where my flap is at. And then all the way to the end. Then we'll look at it. And then if we need to come over a little bit closer, we will. But first we're going to look at it before we do anything else. Now here's what that edge looks like. And we did not take the tip off. And it wants us to iron it towards this direction, towards the right. And then the next piece will be ironed towards the left. Now I did go ahead and iron these pieces before I got started since they've been sitting in a box for all these months. Now you'll note that on this piece, I have it marked on this side once. And I have it pinned here. But when I come down, it's pinned on the other side. So I need to flip over because this right here has a spot. So when I flip it over, this here right this here. in this spot also needs to be marked so that I don't lose this corner. So since I only have one pin on this side, I will do this side first, then I will flip it over and do the other side. This way I don't lose any of my tips. Let's do that now so you have an example of what it looks like. Now on each one of these, let me see if you can see the corner. I went ahead and this was turned the other direction, but I brought it back up so I don't have to worry about my table getting scratched up. And then when I flip it over, I'll just, we're gonna do the very middle one first. Right. Now we're gonna stop, we're gonna take it out, and we're gonna flip it over. Now I went ahead and I put a leader ender at the end. Here's the part that we're gonna be very careful when we go over. And when you're at your own sewing machine, you can actually see that up close. If you don't want to mark it, that's fine, but this is mainly for the people that are kind of beginners. And I'm just doing the quarter inch just like before. If you've been doing the scant, then continue to do your scant. And then we'll, before we iron it, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at it. Here are the two spots that you're going to watch out for, right there and right here. And if you're not comfortable ironing this to the middle, then you can open it like this and iron it. It's going to be your preference as to what you want to do. And I went ahead and I went over it, as you can see here, because I didn't get close enough. So I went back over it. This is my first stitch out there and my second stitch is in here closer. Because I wanted that to be closer to the, the point. Alrighty, now go ahead and do your other one also because we're going to do two sets of these. Here's what you should have up to this point. So for the next, we're going to use two 8Cs and a 2C. And make sure that your flying geese, which is this unit right here, is going to the left as well as to the right because you don't want to be putting it backwards. Let's go ahead and pin these. And looking at them, there is no place that matches. Nothing needs to be marked. So we're just going to roll it over, I'm going to pin it in a couple spots, and then I'm going to sew it. As I sew this side, I've only pinned one piece, which is right here, only because that's going to flip up. I didn't feel like I needed it here because it's actually coming downward. This is a really easy one to connect and sew. Go ahead and do both your sides. There's nothing to match up. This is the other side. You want to go ahead and you want to do yours. Now you have this block and you will press this towards the middle, just like on the last one. They should be the same length. Match them up. If they're not, that's when you want to tweak them before you go further. Alrighty, so let's move on. Now we're going to line them up like this. So the top and the bottom are the first two we did. The middle one is the second one we did. Then we're going to be joining on the right and the left hand side the 7B. But first we're going to put these rows together and I'm going to show you where you need to sandwich them and mark them. Now although it said to iron towards the middle on both of these, so all three of these will have the ironing towards the middle, but the problem is going to be when it comes to the middle, we have to nestle. So I took the one that's in the middle of these three and made it go the opposite direction to do the sewing. Now this side has two places that must go across the joined threads 
and the other side has two. So I'm going to do this one first. So I started off of the corner. I'm going to help it along here a little bit, I think, just so it doesn't get stuck. Maybe I won't need to. No, nope, maybe not. Okay. I'm going to come down to my pin. I'm going to stop. I'm going to take it out. I'm going all the way down to the very end where I have it. Another one right here. And you'll see it when you're doing yours. I'm going to come up to the point of the fold so that I don't lose my fold there. And then I'm going to come across my line. Just like that. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to take it out. And let me see if I've got to... Actually, I can just go ahead and come on down through the end of this because it's not marked in any way. Now I'm going to show you what I've done here. So the only sewing I've done is this edge right here. Then I stopped and then I went all the way down to the other end down here and sewed that and went ahead and went off. Then I'm going to flip it upside down because I have a mark here at the top and I have a mark here. But this is what I was talking to you about. This is, this is the part that's supposed to be folded inward. But in order to nestle these two right here, I folded this one out. It's going to be my choice between this one and the other one. And I decided to go ahead and just move this outward to sew it on there. And I'm not sure what's going to happen at the other end. I don't know if it's going to remain like that or be turned. If it's an option, then I'll go ahead and I'll turn it. But I'm following the directions. I'm just changing mine now that I'm trying to put it together. And then when I get done with this one, we'll go ahead and we'll finish the other one the same exact way with all the marking and everything. I've got it flipped over and I'm just going to continue sewing it. My line there. Remember now you can, it's better to sew it further away from the line and go back over the line closer if you have to in the end than to go over and have to pick it all out. You don't have to pick out your first seam if you went too wide on it. By helping it out you're not pulling it tightly you're just giving it a little bit of help to get through the stitches if you need to remember it's in a large um, gathered spot there and when you're nestling that's when it starts getting thick it gets kind of thick right here where your markings are also so if it needs a little help by all means help it out if it just stops and it goes straight into place all it's done it's locked itself okay looking at it and you're checking it this is the point you're checking to make sure you didn't lose that same with right here and you know it'll, it will open a little bit when you iron it there's a spot right here and a spot right there so I haven't taken any of my tips off I'm good now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the other piece and sew it so you do the same thing just take your time so I've ironed it to the outside is what it said so that's the top and the bottom and we're going to put the sides on now these are not going to match up, but we need to mark them to keep the tips from being removed off of here. So we'll mark this end and that end, and then we'll sew it. And we're going to do it on the right side and the left side of the block. So to get yourself oriented, make sure that your flying geese is going upward. And on this end, it's going downward. It's going to the left. And over here, it's going to the right. Alrighty, so I'm putting the beginning of the left side on. And like I said, it only has two marks and you're not matching anything up. And I noticed on this one here, the marking, this was pushed over towards the left and the marking actually needed to have it pushed to the right. So I just went ahead and just turned it because it had me ironing it the other direction. So don't worry if you've got to change that. Take a look at that. You see that looks good and so does that one and that's what you're shooting for. So let's go ahead and put the other one on the other side. Now you should be right at this point here and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build, because we're going to make two of them, the top and the bottom strips. So we're going to need both our sections 2A, 2B, and 4B plus all four of the shortest two and a half by 26 inch strips of C, which we've got in this pack this month, month 10. 
and then we're going to make those. So I'm going to set this piece aside to make the other two sections before we add one to the top and one to the bottom, and then we'll work on the sides. So what you're looking for in your stack, or your stash, excuse me, are these strips. Here's one set of strips, another set of strips, and another set. And we're going to lay them out like that, and we're going to make two of them before we put the side borders on these. Now for these, you don't need to put any pins unless you feel like you need to. And you can chain stitch them if you want. I'm not going to. I'm making one unit of time for you guys. Here's the next one. And the, that is it for this strip. And then we're going to need to measure because they want you to take the strips that you got today, the ones that measure two and a half by 26 inch, and that's what we're putting on the top and the bottom because the length of this needs to be 26 inches. With this one, we have two places. Here's one. And there's two. So what I'm going to do is I have marked those with sort of like an X. And I'm, on, I'm going to sew them on the other side, but just that little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start it on one end. And when I get to that point, I'm going to stop, cut my thread, jump over that area. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue on until I get to the next one, since there's only two of them. So let's do that first. And you can do it any way that you want to. That's going to be the easiest way for me to do it. So let's start out here, and I'll know because I got the two needles, pins, excuse me, marked. So I'll come up to it, then I'll stop. Alrighty, continuing on. So I've jumped the spot, and I've come over here. Now, if you're concerned about locking it, because I don't do any locking when I do this, you can take your stitch length and make it shorter. And you won't have to go backwards on your fabric to lock it into place and then just increase it as you go move away from that spot. And I have all the spots that I have marked of those things the other side to keep it from being flipped over as I sew it. I'm going to stop and jump over that one. And then I'm going to flip this over and sew the other side where those two spots are at. I'm just starting back on the stitching that's already done and coming up and meeting this. I really don't need this pin since everything is finished being sewn. And then when it's all done, we'll take a look at it. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew this other side. And I'm going to do the same thing, starting on the corner here. Now the bottom fabric is the fabric that actually stretches. This top does not. I'm going to stop here. Take it out and go move down to here. Now I'm going to cut it and flip it over. done you're gonna have it looking like that and now I'm going to do the other one which is over there yet so go ahead and do your other one when that strip is finished you're gonna attach it to the top the only part that needs to be marked is this now a tip is to fold this in half get your center and line it up when you get ready to pin it I already have the other side pinned I just finished this strip so let me flip this piece over here to show you. So here's the piece that needs to be marked and I'm going to sew it all on this side. You might be thinking, well, why don't you sew it on this side? Because this is the piece you added on to. But I don't want to sew it on that side. I want to sew it so I can see this piece right here. So I might as well just stay on this side. It's just a quarter of an inch. There's no starting on the edges or in the middle. I mean, I'm starting on the edge and I'm watching to make sure the fabric is still matched up on the top up here. And then we're going to take a look at it. It's looking really nice. And now I'm going to put the other one on the other end. 
Now we're going to go ahead and do the other side so we can complete this unit itself. And then we'll be building the next one to do. We're going to iron it and take a look at it. Okay, it's getting to be pretty good sized here. Let's pull it up a little bit so you can see the bottom of it. There we go. So let's put this aside and we're going to start working on the next section. Now we're going to use the 4A, which is going to be on the top strip, the section 6, and the 7A on the bottom. And we're going to make two strips because they're going to go on each side of the piece that we have made. The piece that we have made is almost the size of, or not almost the size, the piece we made I'm going to refer to as a panel. And then this is going to go on the right and the left hand side of it. For the first two pieces that we're going to put together, not only do you need to mark it, but you need to be careful because this needs to be nestled. So this is going to go to the, the actually it's on the left hand side, but it's going to the right for the back side. And this is going to the left for the front side. Now we're going to open it up, look at it, make sure that we haven't taken our tip off, and then we're going to put the other piece on. This side also needed to be marked. It's up at the front, or at the beginning of the sewing instead of the other end. Now I have not ironed this yet. I'm going to wait until I'm totally finished and iron it. And when we're done here, you're going to want to make your other unit also. Alright, so it's getting too big for that table over there, so... This is the one side here. You can tell it's loose. Same with that one over there. And you're going to match them up like this. And we're going to be nestling right here. So that's what you're going to be paying attention to. And right here. Okay. So we're going to put the right side and the left side on. So let's go pin that right side. And the very first place that I decided to pin it is right here where the square is at. I pinned it right here. Then I pin it on an edge here so it doesn't flip, and the edge here. Then when you come over to right here, that's when we're going to need to mark it. So we'll have to sew it on this side after we've marked it so that we don't lose our spot. But also, this is going to be where you're going to be nestling. So you're going to be doing two things at once. So you're going to flip this over, which I'm going to show you right now. Then you're going to mark it like I did here. And I put my pins in. Remember now these are cross pins so I can sew it on this side. But we're going to do it on the other side first. Or I may come over here on this side. I don't know yet. And then over here, same thing. And then I'm going to flip it back over. Now that I've got it marked and I know where it's at. And I've put my pins in it so I know when to stop. Then I'm going to continue with going ahead and pinning it on the other side. Okay, here it is all pinned. None of it is matching. The only thing that matched and that made our... Nestling was these things right here where we've got that. I think maybe, let's see. And the one right here, the square. Everything else does not match. If yours matches, that's fine, but none of mine matched up. Not a one. So let me go ahead and we're going to go over here and we're going to sew it. I'm just going to slowly go down here. And then I'm going to jump over that part that needs to be done with all those pins in it. And then we'll come back when we're totally finished. But I got a lot of pins in here, which is fine. All right, we're coming up to the part that has all the pins. So we're going to stop. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go ahead and come on the other side and just continue over here. Coming to our next set. I'm going to stop. Repeat the process. I'm going to make sure I'm not on the head of those pins because my foot does not like that at all. It is up here at the ironing board. It looks really, really nice. And now I'm going to do the other end. So you guys do your other piece. Now we're going to build the last unit to add before we add the strips. So it wants to put a, which I've got up here, section three. That's going to be the first block. We're going to make two of these. Then we have section one, which I have it upside down right there. The 5B. Another one of the section ones. 
and this final one is section nine. Excuse the dogs. My granddaughter's coming home. So let's go ahead and we're going to pin all this and I'll show you where we need to mark it. All right, make sure that you mark your tips. I'm going to go a little bit above that line because I got my mark down a little bit too low. But I can remember that. And this one here. And then we're going to sew it and it's the very first two of one, two, three, four, five blocks we're going to connect. Alrighty, so we're just sewing these like we've done all the rest. It's just going to be more of them put together. I think the most we've done up to this point was four. We don't have to do any flipping. Alrighty, on to the next piece. No marking on this piece at all. So far it's coming along really good. There we go. It's easy to see where this connects. See how that plays out there? So that's really easy and there are no places that need to be marked so this is another easy square to put on now you will need to nestle right here on both of these ends you've got to nestle because you're trying to get that circle okay this is the third one number three of five i think even if you lock your lost your numbers on these you probably would be able to put these together Here is the last block to add to the row of blocks. So let's go ahead and get that sewn. Where it'll have to be marked to keep ourselves from losing our tips. And we also have to nestle on this seam here. All right. Okay, so we're at the point where you're going to have two of them that look like this. If they don't, then you need to fix them. But that's the way they should look. We're going to put one at the top and one at the bottom. So let's get them pinned. Okay, so the problem is when this gets bigger, I have to put part of it on my lap to keep it on this table. And then, for some reason, the pins love to attack me. I always get stuck, so I'm going to try to go real nice and slow and easy and not get stuck with a pen. And up to this point, making this video... I have been sewing for six hours straight with no break. Just to give you an idea how long it would take you to sew this, keeping in mind that I'm actually making a video where when you're at home, you're not gonna make a video. You're just gonna work and make your uh, quilt. You're just gonna add your pieces together. So your time is gonna be less than my time because I have to stop, go around to the side of the table and that sort of thing, where all you're gonna be doing is grabbing your blocks and sewing. So. Just to give you a heads up about how long it will take you. I know I always wonder that when I'm watching people's videos of making something like, how long will it take me to make it? I mean, I see that your video only took 20 minutes, but surely that takes more than 20 minutes by the time you've done everything, so. We're going to pull this out and take a look at it. Alrighty, so I'm putting on the side borders. I don't think you need me to show you how to put on borders. It's just like sewing strips. So you guys go ahead and do your quilts. Mark it if you need to, just like I've been showing you throughout the video. And then when we get done, before I put the next set on, I'll show you. Now, I did, however, fold my border in half. I folded the quilt in half. I pinned it from the middle outward. And when I came out to the end... I had one inch on both sides extra. Whether we're supposed to have a little bit extra, I do not know, but I'm letting you know I have it. So don't panic if you don't have it and yours is the total length of this strip. There's nothing wrong with that. It is my sewing that has created this way. Or my, my sewing has created it to the fact that I've got an inch on each side of this left over. So if you've got it, fine. If you don't, fine. So go ahead and finish sewing your own side borders and then we'll be back when we put that next color on you're going to do the sides first and then the top okay so i went ahead and i put this next set of borders on and i'm going to show you how i cut this i've gone ahead i've ironed it i've attached it i've ironed it 
And then what I'm going to do is I will take my ruler and I'm going to line it up along the edge here. Just like that. All the way down. And you can see it. It's right here with the white. The little white is on there. And then what I'll do is I'll come down here and it's lined up against the bottom here. I'm trying to get that those overhead lights off. So it's lined up against here. That line. And then I'll cut it off right there. And it's okay that it's got a little bit right here that's going to get... Turn it that way so you can see a little bit. That's fine. That means my stitching was a little wobbly. Okay, here is month 10 of Are You Game? My fabric is called Cranium. And I know there was a lot of colors. And before I forget, I want everybody to know that the sign up for the new quilt, the Mr. Quilt, Puzzle Mr. Quilt, is on May 28th. If you already are a part of this, we get one day early registration on May 27th, which is a Monday. And you can go to their website, www.cottoncuts.com and check out all the colors. They are wonderful. There's six different colors. And my next one, I'm going to make for my daughter-in-law. So she has chosen one and I will not tell you what the color is until I get my kit next month. The kits will go out on the 30th. Actually, at the end of this month. I'm sorry, I misspoke. End of the month, May 30th is when they're sent out. It'll arrive in June. So, here we go. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to get alerts about new videos, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.